Hi, fifth grade. This is Mrs. Kiyoka with your flipped math lesson for today, 9-2. Today's objective is I can identify fractions that are in the simplest form, and I can also find the simplest form of a fraction. So today we're going to be working with simplest form. Here's our example problem. A stained glass window has 20 panes. So you can see here that there are 20 of these small panes in the window. Um, 12 of them are yellow. So 12 twentieths of the panes are yellow. Notice how the picture also shows that three-fifths are yellow. Whoops, I missed part of my word there. So you can see these rows right here. There are five of those rows. And out of those five rows, three of them are yellow. So we have equivalent fractions here. We have 12 twentieths. If you look at all 20 panes, then you could count and see that 12 of them are yellow. Or you can look at the whole row and see that three-fifths of them are yellow. So this is like what we talked about yesterday with equivalent fractions. We have the equivalent fractions 12 twentieths and three-fifths. Today we're going to be talking about simplest form of fractions. Well, what is the simplest form? The simplest form is when the numerator and the denominator have no common factor other than one. What that means is that you cannot divide any other numbers out of them to make them any smaller. For example, if we have 12 twentieths, what are the common factors of 12 and 20? What numbers can you multiply together to get 12, and what numbers can you multiply together to get 20? When we do that, we're going to look for the common factors, the factors that are the same between them. So I know that 1 and times 12 equals 12. I know that 2 times 6 equals 12. And I know that 3 times 4 equals 12. Those are the only numbers I can multiply to get 12. Now let's think about the numbers you can multiply together to get 20, the factors. 1 times 20 is 20. Um, 2 times 10 is 20. 4 times 5 is 20. And those are the only numbers that you multiply together to get 20. 6 does not multiply into 20. 7 does not go into 20. 8 does not go into 20. 9 does not go into 20. So I'm going to look for the common or the same factors. Well, we have 1. It's in both of them, but we're not going to count one, okay? Anytime we do this, we're just not going to count the one. Twelve is in twelve, but it's not in twenty. Two is in both of them. It's a common factor. Six is a factor of twelve, but not of twenty. And three is a factor of twelve, but not twenty. And four is a factor of twelve and a factor of twenty. So the common factors are two and four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one of those, and I'm going to divide 12 and the 20 by the same factor. I choose either this 2 or I choose the 4. I'm going to choose the 2 to, to start off. So I have 12 twentieths. I'm going to divide them both by 2. I know I can divide 12 by 2, and I can divide 20 by 2. I found that out by using the common factors. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 20 divided by 2 is 10. When I see 6 tenths, I realize I could divide even further. 6 shares some common factors with 10. The factors of 6 are 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. The factors of 10 are 1 times 10, so 1 and 10, and 2 and 5, 2 times 5. Do you see the factors that are the same for both of them? Not counting 1. Remember, we don't count the 1. 2 is the same for both of them. So I can divide 6 divided by 2 as well and 10 divided by 2. When I do that, I get 6 divided by 2 is 3 and 10 divided by 2 is 5. 3 fifths is the simplest form of the fraction 12 twentieths. We know they are equivalent fractions, but now we know that this is also the simplest form. Okay? Simplest form means that I cannot divide any other factors out. That's as far as I can go. Let's practice a few. Write each fraction in its simplest form. 16 30 seconds. So when we do this, you need to think of all the factors that go into 16 and all the factors that go into 32. I know 1 times 16 equals 16. I know 2 times 8 equals 16. And I know 4 times 4 equals 16. I'm only going to write it once, though. Okay, I'm just finding the numbers. What factors, what numbers are the same that go into 16? And in 32, I know that 1 times 32 is 32. And I know that 2 times 16 is 32. I know that uh, 4 and 8. 
4 times 8 is 32. I believe those are the only factors of 32. So I'm going to look for ones that are common, that are the same between them except for 1. 16 is the same for both of them. Uh, 2 is the same for both of them. 8 is the same for both of them. And 4 is the same for both of them. Okay. This, uh, the 32 is the only one that has 32, so it doesn't count. It has to be one that's the same for both of them. So I could divide 16 or I could divide 32 by any of those numbers that I circled, 16, 2, 8, or 4. i got to choose one of them, and I'm going to divide my fraction, 16, 30 seconds, by the same number. Okay. Now, here's a hint to finding the simplest form. You're going to find the greatest common factor. That means the biggest common factor. When you can find the greatest common factor, the biggest number that they both share, then you can easily find the simplest form. The greatest or the biggest common factor for both of these is 16. 16 can be divided by 16. 32 can be divided by 16. 16 divided by 16 is 1. And 32 divided by 16 is 2. You see how that made my fraction 1 half? 1 half is an equivalent fraction to 16 30 seconds, but it's also the fraction in simplest form. That means I cannot divide down any smaller. Let's try number 2. We have 10 fourteenths. Think of the factors of 10 and the factors of 14. 10 is 1 times 10 and 2 times 5. 14 is 1 times 14 and 2 times 7. So circle any of the factors that are the same except for 1. Well, they both share the factor set 2. So I can divide both the 10 and the 14 by 2. Remember, if I do it to the top, I have to do it to the bottom. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 14 divided by 2 is 7. 5 sevenths is the fact is my fraction in simplest form. I'll put SF for simplest form. I cannot divide it down any further. 5 does not share any factors with 7. Okay, that's simplest form. Okay, let's try another one. Number 3, 33 70 sevenths. So I'm going to think of all the factors of 33 and all the factors of 77. 1 is a factor of 3, 1 times 33 is a factor. Um, I see because it ends in 3. Um, and Well, not necessarily because it ends in 3, but um, because I know that 33 times 11 equals 33. Whoops, sorry. That 3 and 11 are factors of 33. So I don't think there are any other factors of 33. I know 2 is not, 4, 5 is not, 6, 7, 8, and 9 are not factors of 33. Then I go over to 77. 1 times 77 is 77. And 7 times 11 is 77. So now I'm going to look for the common factors. So I can't use 1, so I'm just going to cross those off. And the only common factor that they share is the number 11. So I'm going to take 33 and divide it by 11. I'm going to take 77 and divide it by 11. 33 divided by 11 is 3, and 77 divided by 11 is 7. So the uh, simplest form of 33 77 is 3 7. Okay? Let's try number 4. 16 20 -ths. So I need to think of the factors of 16 and the factors of 20. The factors of 16, of course, are going to be 1 and 16, because 1 times 16 is 16. 2 goes into 16. 2 times 8 is 16. And 4 times 4 is 16. The factors of 20 are 1 times 20, and 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. So those are all the factors of 16 and 20. I'm going to cross off the 1. I can't use it. And I'm going to f um, find the factors of 20 that match the factors of 16. So 2 matches on both sides and 4 matches on both sides. I'm going to choose the largest of those. The largest one is 4. Okay, 4 is bigger than 2. It's the largest. It's the greatest common factor. So I'm going to divide both 
16 and 20 by 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. 20 divided by 4 is 5, because 5 times 4 is 20. The small, simplest fraction I can make, or the simplest form of 16 twentieths, is 4 fifths. Now if I had used the 2, I could have used 2 because both 16 and 20 can be divided by 2. But if I did that and divided them by 2, then I would have gotten 8 tenths. And 8 tenths can also be divided by 2. So I'd have to do another step. I don't like doing other steps. I want to do one step if I can. So I use whatever is the biggest or the greatest common factor. Okay, number five. Oh, look, it's your turn. You get to do number five. 30 fortieths. Can you break that down into its simplest term? Okay, so. Oh, ta-da, looky there. You should have something that looks like this, 30 factors in the factors of 40 and you should have circled the ones that are common between them of course not number one but all the others that they share that are the same so I see they share two and it looks like they share ten so I'm going to choose the biggest of those the the greatest and that is ten and I'm going to divide both 30 and 40 by 10 of course if I whatever I do to the top I've got to do to the bottom 30 divided by 10 is 3 and 40 divided by 10 is 4. That is the simplest fraction. I can't divide it down any smaller. So you should have gotten 3 fourths. Number 6, 10 fifteenths. Make that the simplest fraction you can. Okay, you should have something that looks like this. 10 factors and 15 factors, and the only factor that they share in common other than one is the factor 5. So we're going to divide 10 by 5, and we're going to divide the 15 by 5 as well. 10 divided by 5 is 2, 15 divided by three, 5 is 3. So our answer is 2 thirds. Number 7, 300 four hundredths. Hey, you should see something similar to this. Um, you could go on. I could have written more factors than this for 300 and 400, but I stopped because I noticed that they both share 100, which is a, a very big number, and 300 divided by 100 and 400 can be divided by 100. 300 divided by 100 is 3. 400 divided by 100 is 4. Another alternate way of finding the answer, remember when we have zeros in both numbers and we're dividing, could have just crossed out the zeros, okay? As long as they both share the same amount of zeros, okay? If it was uh, 30 over 400, like I, I couldn't have done that. That doesn't make sense, okay? But since they both shared two zeros on the end, I could just cross those out and then I have three-fourths. Okay? Number eight, 14 twenty-firsts. Okay, you should have found all the factors of 14 and 21 and seen that the greatest common factor is 7. So I'm going to divide both 14 by 7 and 21 by 7. 14 divided by 7 is 2. 21 divided by 7 is 3. So two-thirds is the answer to, or the simplest form of this problem. Number nine, nine eighty-firsts. Okay, if you find all the common factors of nine and eighty-one, you would see that nine is the only common factor other than one. So I'm going to divide both of these numbers, or I'm sorry, I guess 3 is a common factor too, isn't it? 9 is the greatest common factor. So I'm going to divide both of these numbers by 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1, and 81 divided by 9 is 9. So 1 ninth is the simplest fraction. Number 10, 12 one hundredths. OK. 
Okay, so I see that both 12 and 100 can be divided by 2, and they can also be divided by 4. So I'm going to use the biggest of those. The biggest of those is 4. So I'm going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 100 divided by 4 is 25. And I always think of quarters when I think of 100 divided by 4 be like four quarters and each quarter is 25 cents. So the smallest or the simplest fraction I can make is 3 25ths. All right, here's a bonus question. Don states that the fraction 21 30ths is in simplest form. Is she correct? Why or why not? Okay, write down your answer and we'll see if you're correct. Have a good week or have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.